I mean, mm -hmm. I think what Kubrick did with his movies was he would take properties and, and literature and just say, I don't care about this book. I'm going to make a movie based. I'm going to deconstruct this, make a movie based on it. He mm -hmm. has this very specific idea about cinema. And mm -hmm. so he took the really banal idea of a couple that's hit a skid and have drifted apart and uh, started to have invasive thoughts uh, that are driving them apart from each other. But he put that into this incredibly high, thin atmosphere, oxygen world of just the richest fucking guy in Manhattan. I mean, these are the richest people. They don't yeah. touch Earth. That also, that movie doesn't touch Earth. That movie's no. not about anyone anyone knows. <laughs> no, no. Nick, Nick, the piano player, is almost a surrogate in like a guy, but not really. I believe that he was a master filmmaker. And so I don't question, I don't go like, yeah, he didn't do it right. I just go, this is where he was at. And this is what his fucked up brain was making. And uh, so I'll just, I, I don't judge a movie like that by not any movie by a guy like that. In Paths of Glory, about these three guys who've been sentenced to death to be shot by a firing squad uh, because they supposedly let their platoon down. There's this scene of the them the night before they're going to be executed. Yeah. And there's the guy with the, the eye that drifts over, that guy he has in a lot of his movies and his eye drifts to the right. He's having a mental breakdown and he says, uh, I'm going to be dead tomorrow. I'm not going to be in, on this earth. And he sees a cockroach on the table and he says, that cockroach is going to be closer to my wife and kids tomorrow than I am. And uh, the other guy goes, <laughs> <laughs> and he says, now you got the edge on him. That was a great part. I I watched it at. Um, there he is. At I think his best. I think his best movie is The Killing. I think that's probably my favorite Kubrick movie. Actually, overall. I haven't seen The Killing, but I hear it's great. Oh, um, unbelievable. I there's like a lot the of, and I I think there's a lot of that with movies and TV now that when people criticize it, they go, "This isn't up to where what we're all at with the attitudes yes. and with our conscious and our understanding." Okay, well, this is a movie about people who aren't. I said There's a movie about same. people who aren't there. Does every movie have to be like a statement of the of the collective? Like, here's what we've all learned about life. A movie from someone who's myopic or or shallow or uh, backwards is more interesting. I don't want to watch anything by somebody who's kind of like caught up on, you know, where shit's at right now. That's nowhere. Well, that's I just, mean, I mean, who, that's easy to watch. Um, first of all, the pigs and the monkeys together. I don't know how he did that. It's not clear to me how he accomplished any of this in 1968. I don't understand how he had these these monkey people, obviously in suits, but really good ones. So there's apes and there's pigs all around them and they're yelling at the pigs and the pigs aren't leaving. And I don't know how the fuck, where they got these weird pigs. And then there's a wild cat that kills a fucking guy. I don't know how they did that. And it has yellow eyes. Yeah. I don't know how they got a wild cat to attack this guy. It's not CGI. It's not a puppet. It's not clay. It's fucking real looking. This movie has feeling because these beasts are scared in the cave. They're yeah. staying awake because there's roaring. And they're, they look depressed and they're traumatized and scared. And then when that thing comes with the weird people going, ye, 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 and you see the apes trying to touch the thing. And, and at first it's sort of too hot to touch, but then they're able to really smoothen it. And then he has this incredible um, in, uh, restraint because just as that scene is warming up, it cuts. You're left going, what the fuck, what the fuck? happen he's willing to do that and most filmmakers today won't do it because because audiences have demands and they say mm -hmm. i want to i want it to be clear and i want to know what's happening but he goes we're just starting to show you this and now we're taking it away from you and what kubrick did with cinema was to say let's take out all that clarity and replace it with mysterious ambiguity that makes you, everyone's brain decide a different thing about what they're seeing I think that's the greatest thing about his work of this kind. I was talking to my girlfriend lunch about the about how weird it is that we all walk around with these with these rectangles. How mm -hmm. strange it is that we walk around with black rectangles staring into them. They rule our whole lives. And she pointed out that it's like the fucking monolith. It's like almost <laughs> exactly the same thing. And it excites us to 
to uh, to aggression. It's, it is it's like right. you look into this long enough, you're going to pick up a fucking bone and hit somebody in the face with it. Very specific moment in this movie where the the monkey throws the bone in the air. It's almost corny, but it's good. The bone tumbles through the air and it becomes a spaceship. And then yeah. this beautiful music starts, and it kind of suggests that there is beauty in our aggression. That our right. aggression leads to uh, to to things that are celestial and beautiful. But and they're also both weapons, also. Yeah. And also weapons at the same <laughs> rate. And 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 then he has this sequence to get you to the moon that takes a long time, and it's plotting and it's slow, but there's a point behind it, and especially for the time it was made. And yeah. what he does here is very meticulous, which is the first thing that takes you out there. There's two different ships that he travels on. One of them is like a little airplane because it has to make its way through the atmosphere because it's meant to fly with wings. But the thing that goes from the space station to the moon is just a ball. And it's a completely different world than the spaceship with that has uh, airplane uh, seats with fucking jet blue fucking screens in the seat. I mean, it's so exact. The way that with playing with gravity and playing with relative motion and the flight attendant walking in the upside down, which I, I don't know how he did it in today's cinema. I, I don't know how he did it. It looks so good. It looks better than a lot of modern effects. Yes. But the fact that he takes such a long time to get you out there and the logic of how he does it is so precise. And the massiveness of the of the space station that they fly into, it's bigger than any science fiction. They had never made something look so big. And it it it's followed logic and it very elegantly showed what how you would take advantage of the fact that you can walk this way and then this way and then this way. And he just shows it so slowly that you believe you're in space when you get there. You don't yes. you don't need to just go, okay, it's a science fiction movie, space, blah, blah. You go. I'm fucking there. It's a heavy investment that at the time must have been staggering because nobody had ever seen anything like it. Well, yeah, like I'm sure they gave him options for like the first drawings they sent him for like the inside of the space station that goes in circles uh, oh, in the Earth orbit, that the inside was all bumpy and lots of lights flashing. And he was like, no, it's a it's a hallway of a government building. Yeah, it's a it's a immigration way station. And but but the floor should just be gently curved because you're yeah. always walking in a circle. And it's crazy. You go because you really believe that's what they would build. This is the crazy thing about this movie is that it's it's a it's a strange abstract suggestion of the of the of being itself. And then it's a space movie, just a fucking satisfying space movie. And uh, then it's a, a mystery, a strange yeah. mystery. And then it's a horror movie, a yeah, fucking horror movie. And then it's a action film, like the him get how he how David survives. And then it ends as just a fucking art house, nutty, yeah. crazy, <laughs> psycho, what the fuck, so philosophical crazy. painting. He he does not follow your basic uh, three act um, storytelling structure. I don't. I can't think of any of his films that do that. That really go like set up the characters, take them through their conflicts, resolve it, and land the movie. He doesn't do it. He, he doesn't. Just doesn't. This plot. movie yeah. has has two parts. They are. They're not satisfying. They're not. Mm -hmm. They don't go down easy. They're not. They don't take you down the road that you're expecting. There's a very good example of why uh, well, he's just different because I can imagine yeah. people saying to Kubrick. You know, you're not really letting us into Jack as a, a human being. And then Kubrick just said, get away from me. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> yeah. People must have said it to him. Like, uh, we're not, the, the wife is strange. What you're asking Shelly to do, by the way, her hair is falling out because she can't, she's losing her mind playing this woman because yeah. it's not a person, it's not a human being. Badly and he written, said, yeah. and he said, uh, do me a favor, Dorothy. Get the fuck away. Get in the, the other room. Whoever said this to him, he said, just get the fuck away from me. I'm doing this. You go do that in another movie. <laughs> I'm well, going to. And in fact, they did. Stephen King, like, made it again with the guy from Wing. He made it with Stephen Weber. He went from yeah, Jack fucking Nicholson. Because he doesn't, who gives a shit what Stephen King thinks of The Shining? The Shining is not has nothing to do with Stephen King, who I think is a really cool writer. It's a whole other category. 
I'm not doing the thing that you want me to do. I'm not doing a father who changes. I don't, it's yes. boring. It's do, done. It's been done a thousand times. So what? It's a very good way to make a movie. Go watch one. There's many. He's like, I'm making the movie from the point of view of the house and from the point of view of The Shining. This is, that's the main character is fucking hor horrible, strange, mysterious, knowing too much, uh, chilling, shining. Shining is the main character. Jack's I guess not the main character and neither is she. Uh, she is annoying. Like you want her to fucking to die. Uh, take, get, get the hatchet to the head. But it's not supposed to be a horror movie. It's well, not, it, there is no prescription that that movie fills. You don't get a prescription that you go here and they go, oh no, we don't have Friday the 13th. We'll give you the shine. It's not, it's not a generic for Friday. Like when you go to get Prozac and it's really like uh, Lexamil or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I got it's, it here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. No, this is from an abstract point of view of fear. The movie's point of view is fear. Uh, or 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 whatever the f I can't put it to words because it's just suggested. It's it's who's following the kid when he's in the fucking uh, tricycle. That's not even from the kid's point of view. It's from right. the point of view of this fucking presence <laughs> and the fucking and the the poster of the naked lady behind Scatman Crothers. The weird what are you doing? <laughs> and then there's and then there's one yeah, over the TV one. too. Yeah, oh, the TV it's is amazing. Old. This is Stanley Kubrick's idea of what a black man's Florida apartment is like. <laughs> I'm so much more interested in his bent ideas than I am in someone who's like, no, no, I'll show you what this would be like, and I'll show and I'll give you these feelings, manufacturing feelings. And by the way, I'm not putting down. That kind right. of filmmaking, but this he was doing something else. He was totally, a cubist totally. or something. By the way, the whole world is a little strange. The fucking doctor who interviews Danny after he passes out is weird. Yeah. And and then her the mother with the fucking cigarette with the ash. That Everyone's weird. Yeah, right. It's insane. And the fucking guy with the giant hair who interviews him and the way they walk through the place and it's so fucked up. There's it's somebody, barely yeah. a difference between the people that actually work in the hotel. And Floyd and the and fucking you know and the ghosts, but that's where the, the the place is like sucking people in. I mean, the ghost, the fucking the it's the building's point of view. The building reaches out to Scatman Crothers across and and makes him come from all the way from Florida. That's not your basic uh, horror movie stuff. What again? I, there's, I, there was people on the set going like, "Do you know how to make a, a horror movie?" And Kubrick said, I'm not interested in that or anything else you have or to say people. Is fired. It, yes, look, a lot point. of people have said that Jack is like insane in this movie. <laughs> I get like, it. I I'm get not. it. But I again I'd way rather watch that than somebody who's like, boy, they really nailed the casting with this uh role. Like <laughs> Shelley Duval's a good example. She's not beautiful and no uh elegant, and there's not chemistry between them, like cute. They barely know moments each other. Yeah. where you're like, oh, look at these two. That's nice. Ooh, I hope nothing bad happens. Like, who gives a fuck? I like I've seen it so many times. I'd much rather watch like, why are they talking like that? That's insane. Why are they talking I, like that? I and I get I try to it's detached to, to it. It's you're you're detached emotionally. You're just kind of watching it from You're detached from what you're used to, but you're invited into something else. You're not looking in depth into the human soul. That's just one place to look. That's mm -hmm. not the only place to look. He's looking at nature, and uh, and uh, he's looking at abstract things, but he's looking deeply into them. I, movies are not about human beings. He's not They're a humanist. About yeah. ideas. Yes. Even exactly. Barry Lyndon, which is named after a guy, it's not about Barry Lyndon. It's a strange movie about human failure and the loser and like the loathsomeness of human beings. I mean, I it's think not I... about a guy. He was capable of making just a good thriller. He could do it. I mean, uh, um. The Killing is just a fucking great movie. I mean, Sterling Hayden in The Killing is is your guy in the movie. He's your protagonist, but you know he's a crook uh, on repentance. Paths of Glory is his most humane humanistic movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, I I don't know. I and guess yet it's about how horrible people, people are. are. <laughs> yeah, it's not even just about war. It's about how in the corporate structure of the army, how disgusting human beings can be throwing, and that people have to die for other people's cowardice. The thing that pays it off for me is that I just think, look, there's a shot in the 2001 when the monkey first starts to play with the mm -hmm. bone. The, like should, the way the shot is framed, if you go look at it, it's just, it's an absolute painting. Yeah. All of his shots are just 
so beautiful and his sense of editing and how to keep you gripped. He had a huge amount of skills and he decided I'm going to use them like this. I'm going to make this stuff that's, I don't want to go straight at it. I just that's don't. He took his incredible skills to a very strange place in the human brain. And there are just miles and miles and miles and miles of movie film that are really well executed and not to be diminished. This is yeah. just a different category and not to be, not to be uh, put into like, well, you could have done this. Yep. But that's not Kubrick. It's just a different, it's a like different that's tone. A, these movies are a critique of human evil, but he seems to not. <laughs> I don't think they're a critique. That's the whole thing. I don't think they're a, oh. critique. They're a study. They're a, a study, study of human evil, a clinical study. Yeah. Of... So you, he's not pro or con. No, he's showing it, which I think is better. And that's how I feel about it.